Hello, everyone. Welcome to Drumeo Edge. Today is a very, very special day. We have Mr. Sean Brown out from Toronto. Sean is the rep for Yamaha Drums Canada, correct? That's correct. And he was kind enough to come out here and talk about electronic drums and the different things that you can do with them. On my left, I don't even know who this guy is anymore. And I don't know why he's here, <laughs> but I can't get rid of him. <laughs> I'm here all the time anyway, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, just to kind of get us started, First off, if you guys are watching this live, make sure you get any questions you have into the question thing below. Mm -hmm. Submit a question. Because we're going to try and get to as many as possible later on. Um, but I first want to talk about the way this all went down. I flew okay. to Toronto a while ago. I think it was in August, mm -hmm. somewhere in there. And uh, I'm just about I, to have a baby. Just about to have a baby, yeah. which I have now, which is great. Congratulations. <laughs> which is great, which is, but it's also crazy. Um, and uh, I, I booked a meeting with Sean. He was kind enough to accept uh, meeting with me, and uh, we talked about Yamaha electronic drums, and we kind of struck an agreement to have Yamaha drums in the Drumio studios. Mm -hmm. It's been absolutely awesome. Mm -hmm. um, um, one thing we did is he, one thing Sean did is he took me to a music store. I forget the name of that music store. You want to know the name of the music yeah. store? It was Cosmo Music. Cosmo Music yeah. in that's right in, in Toronto, in right? Richmond Hill, Ontario. Just Richmond Hill, Ontario. And uh, and then he sat down. All the guys are watching and stuff, everything. And he did a demo on this kit. I'm like, that's really really cool. You got to do this for the members of Drumio Edge. And so he is kind enough now to fly four hours, two thousand kilometers away. Maybe it's more something than like that. Yeah, something like well, five hours. <laughs> actually. Five, five hour flight. Okay. <laughs> fly and. Uh, yeah, and basically he's, he's here, he's going to kind of talk about electronic drums, talk about the benefits of them, some unique things that you can do with them. And like I said, if you have any questions, just feel free to shoot them at us, but it's just going to be kind of a nice little hangout where you guys can ask some questions and we can kind of, you know, figure out the benefits of these awesome drums. Mm -hmm. So why don't you, just the way you, you kind of started the demo, um, I know you have some tracks to play and stuff. I don't know how exactly you want to go about it. But. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to show. Um, sure. I just wanted to start off by saying, and finally, thanks again for inviting me. No um, you know, we're an acoustic drum company, so we really respect um, the the creativity, the sound of what acoustic drums can do. I don't believe it can actually ever properly be duplicated. Um, what we come at with our design for electronic drums surely is trying to make something that's silent enough for you to be able to practice in a place at any time, anywhere but also something that enhances other levels of musicianship and musicality, like being able to control the song and the band and the bass player and the music. Mm -hmm. um, or to be able to communicate with other drummers, hey man, can you sit in for me next week and be able to email your set list to your buddy to do your track, for you, to do your gig for you, uh, and have it be less than two megabytes. You can send it off a telephone with MIDI files and stuff. So yeah. this actually creates work for drummers. Um, some drum producer does not want to sit and program all the drums for this thing. He can send it to you in 10 minutes. You can have the tracks done, sent to him. You get paid. Everybody's happy. Yeah. So those are the advantages of electronic drums we see. I don't think nothing's going to ever replace an acoustic drum in my mind and probably in yours as well. But anyways, mm -hmm. starting with that, um, the DTX 950 system implements a different kind of a head technology that people haven't seen before, which is called textured cellular silicone, which is air bubbles injected into silicone. Yeah. Uh, we've worked with artists from everyone from Tommy Aldridge, Dave Weckl, Carter Beauford, yeah. Russ Miller, and had them tell us what's real feeling. So we're not some company that's going to tell you what we think feels real. We worked with these artists for two years. We spent millions of dollars in research and development to come up with this system and came up with something while I turned everything down. You just feel how silent yeah. these are and how they bounce. And then also making it so they have rims. Yeah, should have yeah. rims like real Very drums. Cool. We should have rim sounds. I should also, with the snare drum, be able to throw it up. I should be able to choke cymbals. These are things that are just make so much sense with playing uh, drums. So. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's something that really drew me to these drums is those, you called them, you said it right, way nicer. Textured silicone. Textured cellular silicone, TCS. Okay. Texture, textured cellular silicone. There's a mouthful. Just imagine if you're Japanese trying to say that. <laughs> okay. Uh, also, be able to tune the toms. With these control knobs. So everything's a little bit more based on the drum set instead of having to dig through the module. And I think yeah. drummers like that a little bit more. It's a little more organic and yeah. human. Definitely, and I love, that's like I said, I love the pads, and I love the fact that you can just quickly adjust things on cool. the fly. Yeah, that's something that really sets them apart, I think. Okay, thank Great. you. Um, as I was talking about MIDI files earlier, we uh, 
we'll get on the internet and you know, always looking for fun things to check out. For instance, MIDI files are, there are many free MIDI files. MIDI files are electronic music that's made, there's no vocals in it, because of course a computer can't emulate a singer. So the melody line is usually in some kind of a harmonica or some kind of synthesizer, and yeah, sometimes it's pretty darn cheesy. But it is free, and it allows you to practice a tune, and you'll find anything from Elvis and Eagles to Tool to any heavy metal or country and western tune you could possibly imagine. So they just search like the song and then MIDI file, and then it's something. That's it. What's MIDI the file format for... on that? It's a dot .mid or with Mac dot .midi. Okay. And uh, there are two formats of these that have been made since the 80s. This has been around that long, uh, or early 90s as well, uh, called standard MIDI files, SMF. Um, some of them are compressed so that they're all, all the music is recorded onto one track, and some of them are separated so that they'll play on multiple tracks. So mm -hmm. you do have to make sure whatever device you're using, whether it's a DTX 900 or any synthesizer or keyboard that they're playing on, what kind of format they are so that they'll work properly on this machine. This one uses MIDI file format zero. Now, that allows me, we just went and we just found a tune uh, that we downloaded called Working for the Weekend, which is from a local band here in British yeah. Columbia called uh, Loverboy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Maddie. <laughs> yeah, it's probably finally finally time not to see some guy who can't play drums on Drumio. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> um, so what I do here is I go to my song file, and I uh, just go up to what's called external. I can take any USB stick, put the files on, stick it right in there, and the uh, track comes right on here. And I'm going to play it, and what's going to happen is I've got one button I can press. In ears, baby. <laughs> okay. Well, sorry, can you yeah. explain or say what you're yeah, saying I don't think while you're playing? Because I don't think people got to hear that. Okay. So as I'm playing the track, a MIDI file, every MIDI standard MIDI file you ever find, the drums are always on MIDI channel 10. There's 16 channels of music happening. Mm -hmm. So the drums are always on MIDI channel 10. So the DTX would recognize this. So as soon as you play the tracks, you press the drum button right on the screen there, it automatically turns the drums off. Oh, I see. Automatically. Gotcha. So any MIDI song that you download, even if it's got drums on there, it'll take the drums out of that MIDI song it'll, on that brain. It'll mute the track for Very you. Very cool. Now this also mutes the bass track, which tends to be on MIDI channel 7. So if your bass player comes over, buddy wants to come over and jam, at least it's if you've got some guitar and key and other melodic tracks to work with so that you can work on rhythm section stuff together as well. Or you can just have the drum and bass and just play the other musical parts if you wanted to practice... Uh, your harmonica or <laughs> your other instrument, right? your accordion. <laughs> and I think we should also mention too, there's a bunch of preloaded songs already on here that they can mute stuff. And a absolutely. Practice. And I wanted to demonstrate that next. This okay. is another thing that's uh, uh, very cool that actually Yamaha implemented into systems going back as far as 1987, um, where they would be able to take musical phrases that could play in certain ways. For instance, I could Depending on the tempo of the song, I can play it, it'll play four measure, four beats. And the next time I hit it, it'll play the next four beats, mm -hmm. if it was an eight-bar measure, yeah. musically. So one excellent example of that is this tune. I call, oh, well, I'm, running, I'm in song mode, not drum kit mode, sorry. Jared, stall for us. Stall. So uh, yeah, basically right here, what Sean is doing is he's adjusting it from the song mode to the drum kit mode. Right. Are we ready? Thank you. <laughs> okay. So here's four different musical phrases by an organ. Four measure, four beats. Okay. Now this is going to drive a sequence which is going to play, and it's going to play forever until I either hit it again and stop it. Watch. Now if I hit them both together, they're going to work. Okay? Now, here's another element of this. Yeah. This pad, this is called altered mode. Altered will turn off the last pad that was playing. So we've got a one chord and a four chord playing groove here. So I got this. I'll turn off the other pads I'm playing. Gotcha. And then I can add this musical sequence over top. Now, why is this cool? It's only cool when you do this. Get it? Yeah, Got very it. cool. 
I, fun, eh? Like I said, I, I got yeah. obsessed with that for a while. I was doing stuff in seven, because you can actually alter the time signature. As and long then hitting, as you get the pad, yeah. Yeah, hitting the four count thing at a random time, stuff like that. And then I would, uh, I would uh, invite people over, and I have one of these, I have the 750K yeah. in my, in my uh, practice space mm -hmm. at home. And so I would bring people over and be like, hey, come check this out, I, I can show you something here. And so I would play that for them, but they don't, somebody who doesn't play drums doesn't really know that I'm triggering it. Like a drummer would know, yeah. but I would literally wow people and they thought I was the god of the drum set. Yeah. <laughs> it had yeah. nothing to do with that. It's just very, very simple and anyone can do it, which yeah. is what I love. Yeah, they can, you get used to it after a while, but being yeah. able to control the music yeah. adds a whole new element to the practice. I agree, mm -hmm. yeah. Because even if you're only playing in a wedding band doing boom chucks and 44 every weekend, <laughs> you know, as long as you can start to control things a little bit more and, and start to explore different ways, then it makes your mind think a little bit differently. Absolutely. I also have to note that these the sequences are built in uh, that are preset. You can you're, add your own in. Right. You can totally uh, create your own sequences or maybe make something on your computer or garage band. And turn so you can it export a MIDI onto your USB and program it to trigger with one of those packs. Absolutely. Yeah. That's cool, yeah. There's another demonstration that I was going to show you guys now in stack and altered mode where you can control sure. it. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do it so much in sequences as I'm going to do it in just showing chains of notes and effects and things that I can do on a particular kit. So, for instance, in MIDI, which stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, by the way, if you don't know. Sorry if I'm talking like everybody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, I didn't know that. The uh, thing that's cool here is that there's 16 tracks, as I was mentioning before. Well, those tracks, you have control in the drum set as well. Now, the MIDI channel 10 is always the drums. So as soon as I go into any other MIDI channel, I can make it up to 127 different instruments mm -hmm. that are built into the machine. Pianos, organs, guitars, horn shots, um, synthesizer blasts, yeah. that kind of stuff. And all you, that's built into this All machine. of it's built into this oh, machine. Really? Now, let's just start with drums for a second, just okay. for fun. So I got this tom over here. Okay, when I go into stack in altered mode, I can create a chain of up to 99 events. Now, we, you and I talked about, this is one of the demonstrations yeah, that I yeah. showed you. This is the, the right, this is the, my so I'm going to put this, I'm going to make this a kick drum. Now, with synthesizers, you know, you can play the drum sounds on a synthesizer. Yeah. C1 is always a kick drum. E1 is always a snare drum. Yeah. So whether it's like a funk kit or a metal kit or a TR-909 yeah. uh, electronic drum machine kit, it, the drums are always in the same place. That's why you can play a MIDI file on any device and the drums and the kick and the hi-hat and the snare and everything is in the right place. Right. Otherwise it would just be sound like somebody falling into the drum set. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So there's my kick. Now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna add an event here on here. And I'm gonna make this event, I'm gonna make it a closed hi-hat. F sharp. There we go. So we've got a kick and a hi-hat. Of going? One back and forth. Okay. Okay. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go to the third event. I'm going to add it in. Enter. I actually want to know how to yeah, do this. Yeah, I'm actually curious about <laughs> this one, too. This is... Uh, this is all in the manual. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that we've all read, right? Jay? It is in the manual, but okay. Uh, so I'm going to go to the event number three, and I'm going to make it C1. There we go. Then I'm going to go to a, okay, so now I've got kick, close hi-hat, kick. So if I play it in sequence, it's going to go kick, hi-hat, kick, kick, hi-hat. The first kick's only going to happen once, right? Because I made it only happen on the first chain. Right. Every other time it's going to repeat in a group of three. Hi-hat, hi-hat, hi-hat. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So that chain's going to happen forever. Now I'm going to go and add a fourth event in there. And on this event, I'm going to make it. Oh, man, a snare. So many ideas. I know. You want, so oh, you can ideas. do unbelievable things. This is the most basic one I can possibly think of to get the idea across. So I've got four events happening. Close hi hat. Okay. So let's try this one. That's I am awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Impress <laughs> your friends. There you go, okay. guys. Yeah. How okay. to play the beat with one hand. You put yeah. that around your ear and it won't keep falling out. Is that what's happening? Yeah, that's what's here? happening. Just take a, take a second. There we go. Awesome. Fine. Okay. Now I'm going to change this a little bit. 
and I'm gonna make this uh, snare kick, hi-hat, snare, and hi-hat. Now kick, it's gonna sound like this. hi-hat, snare, and hi-hat. Right. So this is great for when you're at the gig and you actually really need to get a drink, or you really need to adjust your underwear. Um, yeah, I don't think people could hear you, but he was saying, because when you, when you play, they can't necessarily okay. hear you. He was saying, if you could play, you could get, grab a drink, or... Exactly. Adjust your underwear. Say hi to your buddy. Anyways, uh, that's one example of uh, just a chain of four separate events. Now, ironically, each one of those events could be a six-part chord being played. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just give you a quick example of that. I can go to this pad. And I go into the MIDI interface, into the main uh, junction. Well, they can go to other, and it goes to MIDI. And then this brings me to the 16-channel mixer that I have. Yeah. And I go over to the mixer, and I turn the transmit of the channel on. Well, uh oh, good. OK, and now this pad, I go back to this pad. This one I'm going to turn to MIDI channel 1, which is the first channel in that mixer. You follow me so yep. far? Okay. Yep. The first sound is always a piano sound. Okay, but because I just... It, that's a rock just, and sounded piano. That's a rock and <laughs> piano. Let me fix that. There we go. Initialize it. Piano sound. Now, in this piano sound, I've got... I can go to a chord function, which will allow me to... to make, like, three different notes happening at the same time. So... Let's just do this. Go add. Now I've got a G. Let's add a D, the fifth. You obviously have knowledge of chords and, and melodic structure. There's a D and a G happening. There you go, yeah. And then here I'll make a B. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, I uh, work for... I have to make sure they're all in the same step, by the way, for them to happen right. at the same time. Because I could have... Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. I could have, um, oops, go one. I could have literally like all step one could be five different things. Step two could be one thing. Step yeah. three could be six mm -hmm. different things. So I could have like a chord hit, and the next time I hit it, it's a horn blast. The next time I hit the pad, it's playing a sequence. The next time I hit the pad, it's gonna. Now, does it remember like, what part of the sequence you're in? Like, is there a certain amount of time before it resets back to one? Um, does that make sense? No. 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 If you, you know what Kira Jimbo? Yeah. You've seen Akira Bajimbo oh, play. So yeah. he uses a lot of this kind of functionality where he plays sequences and move. He has what's called a uh, panic button. He has one pad over here. You don't see him hit very much. But when somehow he gets something out of sequence, it never, none of his shows are ever the same. That's kind of like one cool thing. Although he's these electronics, he's doing yeah. sequences, he's actually always live. Whenever he messes up, gets ahead of himself, he hits that and resets everything. Uh, but to answer your question, no. It always goes back to the last chain that you're at. So if you accidentally double hit something, yeah. you're lost. Yeah, it's a gotcha. Okay. So you've got to be pretty well rehearsed if you're going to do this stuff live, but yeah. that's the idea is to make these things simple. Yeah. Don't do too many things on one pad. Try to make it so you can be organic and move around the pad and control things inside the music mm -hmm. that, are, that are cool like that. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to make one last note to show and prove to you that I can indeed make a chord. <laughs> <laughs> In case you guys want to play piano on your drums. So I got G, D, and B. I can go over here to gate times. Right now, they're holding for 0.3 seconds. So here I can hold, go over here and hold it for uh, 1.7, 1.1, and 1.4. All three notes will hold for a different period of time. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. Okay? Huh. So That's if really I do, easy and quick to it's do. It's easy and quick when you get if used you to it. you know how, yeah. I, trust me, I mean, I, I actually haven't touched one since the last time I did a demo. Oh, really? I really? wanted to. I said, I'm going to really blow those guys away. <laughs> <laughs> and while I was sleeping in the backseat of the car, I got out of here because it was 5 o'clock in the morning at the yeah. airport. Um, still, like, I remember how exciting and fun this device yeah. um, is. This device, this instrument. Yeah, is. I shouldn't sure. say that device. Cool. So um, MIDI files, communicating via MIDI files, practicing via MIDI files, um, stack in altered mode, being able to stack things deep. You can do up to six things at a time. I also have to mention there's a fully implemented 512 megabyte sampler, stereo sampler. Okay. You can implement only, f only, only four samples in one voice or six MIDI voices. 
So you want to sample your own favorite vintage snare drum that you don't want to take out to the gigs to use at a gig, or yeah. you want to sample tubular bells, which uses up an awful lot of memory, by the way. The high yeah. frequencies, the higher the frequencies, the bigger the sample. All you do is plug a microphone into the back of this, record what it is you want, but at the same no time, it, yeah. it accepts AIFF or WAV files, so if you don't want to do the sampling yourself, which by the way is fun, because you sample like your backup singer, and then you can have your backup singer doubled over in front of your singer, mm -hmm. and you get that tune. That's what all the pros are doing now. Mm -hmm. But it's better than having a machine do it to have the drummer control it, because yeah. the drummer is the one protecting the groove from the beginnings. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, so different functions of that. Um, again, I'll add no single device on the market anywhere that you can buy does all the things that this machine does. So. Well, I know I have a, a sampling pad just for that, but if I can incorporate, I don't even, I didn't know you could do that for, uh, on this kit. That's really cool. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely you can. And again, you don't have to sample it yourself. There's tons of samples available, both by freeware or great uh, programs uh, yeah. that are out there. Absolutely. In, in you just do libraries. some, just Google it. I'm sure you'll find tons yeah, of, of stuff. Course. Same with the, the mini files. I've heard of people just finding thousands and hundreds of thousands of mini files. I've, some yeah. of them, honestly, are Really junk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So be <laughs> like, careful. <laughs> some of them, though, I gotta admit, are awesome. Yeah. I, I found a version of uh, Spirit of Radio. Yeah. And what's more fun than playing that intro? To that too, because I've never ever been able to play it right. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna get Mike McCalco in here. To... Yeah. Exactly. He's in the chat, by the way. He says hi. How's it going? Hi, Mike. Wanted to say a big hello to you. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Okay. And so as as that's. A excellent demonstration and that's a kind of exactly what you showed me when we were out there and I I mean that's just scratching the surface too because as all the cool stuff you can do over here I, I really love just actually playing the drums mm -hmm. it's been my primary source of practicing for well I have two kids now and so mm -hmm. I can't really bash my drums at home because mm -hmm. one of them is always sleeping and so um, I've been using the 750k which has a smaller pads same mm -hmm. same cellular silicone technology <laughs> right Wow. Silicone, dyslexia. cellular, something like silicone. that. Textured, <laughs> cellular, silicone. Let me say why it's textured. If yeah. you feel the heads, they're rough, like a coated head. Yeah. We tried doing them smooth when I was in the development team for two years with these products. I watched these things grow from literally concepts on paper to being products that oh, people cool. play every day. Yeah. yeah. It's the coolest job in the world. Sorry, kids. Yeah. <laughs> Even cooler than my job? <laughs> <laughs> but when you had them smooth, the stick bounced right off of them work right at all. So yeah. as soon as we added this gritty texture to it, everybody noticed yeah. it felt better in, in the stick attack. And people would, we will, I know some drummers wonder, like, why would you want less rebound? I thought you want lots of rebound so you can go fast. Well, I think the point is trying to, you know, create something that's similar to uh, an acoustic playing situation. For me, like, choosing these to, to, to practice on stuff like that has just been huge because when I actually go to my acoustic kit now to, to do the session or to do something in here, you know, I don't feel like I'm sluggish or I can't move around the kit, which has been really, really helpful. Yes. Dave, Dave too. Dave have me and him are both kind of working with with these uh, mm -hmm. the other versions, the smaller version of this kit, and so. Well, in the instances that electronic drums are a necessary evil <laughs> for me having to play, because yeah. not everyone have a 12 by 12 private uh, soundproof studio to exactly. play anytime yeah. we want. Um, notice, like the bigger the drums, I mean, the eight inch and the seven smaller ones, you feel a little tighter, yeah. but with the design of this system, because of the 12 inch snare drum, oh, by the way, I noticed also got also got zone for rim shots on the snare drum. Cool. Yeah. Um, you, you have more space to work with, but you get a much more hard feeling than tom-toms. Nobody tunes their toms like skating rinks unless they're in a bebop game. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, you feel like you're digging into them a little bit. A chord. <laughs> You're gonna have to put that back because I'll never know how to get it back. Yeah, I didn't save it. So <laughs> okay. As soon as, you, <laughs> yeah. soon as you change it, it'll be back. Matthew, cool, Dave. Right. I'm sure we have lots of questions. Um, is that the yeah. end of the demo? Okay, great. So we can take your questions now. We have a little bit of time. We're setting up for another um, show coming up in the next little while. So get your questions in now. Um, Dave, did you have any to start with? Uh, I have tons of questions of myself, but uh, we have enough from these from the members. So we'll get to okay. those ones first. Um, okay. So this one, I'm, I'm just going to throw you some questions. Some okay. of them are just comments, but I okay. want to get them in anyway. Uh, Stay Focused says, uh, I'm looking to upgrade my Yamaha kit. Now, he just asks, Do, is there any access to discounts through Drumio? That's <laughs> what he wants to know. Uh, no, yeah. not that we know of yet. Stay tuned. <laughs> um, Daniel LS says, are those cymbals the same as an acoustic drum set? Oh, that's a good thing to touch mm -hmm. on. Okay. 
Uh, they're probably not the same. Okay. No, they're not obviously the same. These are rubber pad symbols, but uh, the functionality of them, I guess. And yeah, let's uh, in the, let me give a quick demonstration of that. Yeah. Okay, you get a bell sound. You get a center sound. And you get an edge sound. Okay, and you can choke them. In that essence, yes, they're like cymbals, but you don't get the kind of washes that you want to get with a real cymbal. Mm -hmm. I recommend if you play in a church or an environment where they ask for the keep the toms down, cymbal, acoustic cymbals just can't be beat. It's the weakest link in an electronic drum system, but at least you get a bell, center, and an edge. Yeah. So you get three. And by the way, only one cable is necessary for doing this function on the Yamaha kit. Cool. Yeah, very cool. Um, okay, Cal Talbot says, uh, what does the Yamaha rep have to say about using e-drum kit players uh, that keep getting evicted from their apartments because of the electronic drums and not acoustic ones? I guess maybe um, just the pad hitting or stomping on the on the floor, I guess, apartments. Yeah, I've had uh, a lot of customers call me with this, and I'm, I'm glad you called me about this thing. There's a few things that I've done or suggested for people. First of all, Stop hitting them so hard, kids. <laughs> I, yeah. I know. We forget because we have headphones on. We just start smashing them because it feels so great and we're getting so much uh, angst and anger out. <laughs> but I listen to people playing them in stores and I'm like, what's going on? Like, try to control yourself and play a little bit later. First of all, your wrists will thank you. Your ankles and shins will thank you. Now, I'm not saying that's totally the problem because you're right. Some of them are like hitting Tupperware. Depends on which electronic drum your system you're using. There are certain particular ones which will remain unmentionable uh, here <laughs> that are so ridiculously loud that there's nothing you can do about it. It might as well be an acoustic drum set. Yeah. So, a couple of tips. A, your neighbor underneath you is going to be hearing it a lot more than a neighbor above you. Find out which room at what time of day you like to practice the most because if you're a drummer, you're probably working at night when they're home. But So it won't matter that much. But if they're home during the day, try to find the room that they spend the least amount of time in during the day, like you know, maybe the kitchen or... Maybe their bedroom, they don't spend much time. Can you put your kid in your bedroom? That may not be the answer for everybody, depending on where you live in the world. Right. Another one is um, styrofoam, SM styrofoam. Um, cut yourself a couple pieces so you can make yourself a six by six square, and then try to get a small piece of rug to put on it. This takes a lot of the edge of the kick drum issue. Okay. Um, uh, another way of doing it is there are several control pedals that you can buy that are not real pedals. The pedals are the real culprit. Not the tom toms. Yeah, reason. that's true. Yeah, it's the Especially key, yeah. on these drums, like you don't hear it that much. And that I think it's a lot to do with the vibration transferring through the floor, so they're hearing Absolutely. this tick, tick, tick. Mm -hmm. I'm, I was uh, I used to live in a condo, and I played electronic drums. I was probably doing exactly that, just going nuts. And my neighbor came up and got really upset at me. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah well, think because she didn't have a double twenty four rock tour kit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A couple people in the chat just say, why don't you just send them earphones downstairs? <laughs> Which is another Well, guess, at least solution. they're thoughtful. Yeah, at least they're thoughtful. <laughs> um, but that's true. I mean, hitting them a little less hard, and if the neighbor really isn't considerate and won't tell you, hey, can you practice on that side? And I won't hear you as much. They couldn't give a crap about your life and your lifestyle, yeah. and you're being able to practice your one true love. Um, <laughs> Then there are pedals available. The Yamaha version of it's just been released called the KU100. All it is is just a control pedal. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know what? It's nowhere near as cool as playing with a pedal. And if you're a blast beat player, they'll even, believe it or not, actually help you a little bit, give you a serious amount of resistance, and you'll really have to compensate with your feet, so when you get on your pedals, you'll just fly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, those are the recommendations I can, cool. I can make. Yeah, cool. no, that's great. Um, this one's from Kenny V. He says, I have the DTX700. Can I load MIDI files onto that module as well? Absolutely, and you can put samples on. On the DTX 700 as well, yeah. cool. Uh, Drumjack52 says, so the Brain has a general MIDI sound generator in it? Yes, as a matter of fact, it's a full motif synthesizer uh, and with a general MIDI uh, tone generator inside. Cool. Good question. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Captain Bob says, uh, do you know any gadgets that can separate music tracks from MIDI files for use when not with electric drums? Ooh, that's a kind of a... Well, absolutely. For instance, like the DTX um, actually comes with Cubase AI software, which is a full multi-channel uh, software system uh, that you can take the general MIDI file if it's mixed and separate all the tracks, take out the tracks you don't want, mm. take those tracks, change them into different keys, do anything you want with them. They're MIDI files, they're shareware. Have a good time. And then you can print that and then use that as your drumless track. Yeah. yeah. Play exactly. your acoustic drums. Exactly. Yeah, mind you, you know, don't try to sell it to anybody because <laughs> technically you haven't paid any licensing fees and it belongs to somebody right. else. But. Right. Excellent. 
Excellent advice. Uh, Fitz says, uh, hey, Sean, what are the different Yamaha electric drum modules, and what is the prices for each <laughs> this one? Could be a long <laughs> this could be a long one. So okay. if you don't, just want to name a couple. or The modules themselves um, are sold depending on what, like when you're thinking about the kits. They're, they're right now, there are four different models in the Yamaha line. There's DTX 400, which is just launched. It sells for a whole kit for about $4.99 across Canada and the United States. Uh, I don't know what it sells for in Europe or right. Indonesia, sure. yeah. Myanmar, <laughs> India. Uh, the DTX 500 series is its big brother, and uh, there's a range starting anywhere from uh, $5.99 all the way up to um, $16.49 in Canada, but that's when they start coming with hi-hat stands and more mm -hmm. functional. Mm -hmm. There's a DTX 700, which is a great sort of junior 900 that we made, which has a nice big screen and great functionality and you can put samples in it. The sounds are amazing. It's a cool screen on it. We can change this, this, this you can make the hi-hats bigger and smaller graphically okay. so you can change the sound you yeah. get. And then there's of course our flagship, the 900. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. And this kit sells for about $54.99 in Canada so it's uh, it's not cheap. Does that come with the rack and everything? Right. Everything you see yeah, I love this rack. Yeah. It even comes with a hi-hat stand. Yeah. Does not come with the pedals. Excellent. Okay, Organa says, what about computer software? I don't know exactly what I think I just answered that. This comes with Cubase, so you can there go, you go through all the MIDI files. Well, she might be asking about, yeah, so there's other software that this could connect to, like sure. okay. Ableton Live and all the other BFD and all the other cool drum softwares, and yes, it's totally compatible. And believe it or not, at Yamaha, we started working with some of those companies because some of their samples, they've spent so much time and work to make such excellent samples. And yeah. We would make the grace to all those cool old Slingerland snare drums and stuff. You know, like we, we always sample our own drums, and we're pretty proud of them. But there's also certain sounds that are yeah. classically available you want to have. Cool. Cool. Uh, okay, Stephen underscore T says, "Can you show us the hi hat? How often is the least convincing part? Sorry, says how is it often that the least convincing part of the electronic kit is a hi hat? Absolutely. Yeah. Tony Verderosa, a very famous electronic musician from New York City." said in a clinic that I heard him do back in 1990, one of the first systems said, the hi-hat will always be the weakest link in an electronic drum system. You know, symbols, I'm always just going to hit them. You're always trying to get some kind of sensitivity out of the hi-hat. But this is a fat barking. I'm yeah. barking. Yeah. <laughs> you watched my lesson. Uh, he learned yeah, something. He learned how to hi-hat. <laughs> but... Again, you get good sounds. I can splash on it, just with my foot. I can close sound, an open sound, and then a semi-open. Okay, so it's going to be depending on what you're playing. If you're just, you're not going to know so much. But if you're somebody who like to really get a lot of sensitivity out of the hi hat, um, you may not know it. You, this is the biggest problem because on a real hi hat, you just feel so much sound coming right into your face, yeah. right off this yeah. thing. You're not hearing it come around you yeah. or engulfing you. So, yeah. sorry, kids, we're working on it. Yeah. But as far as the response goes, I've actually uh, been practicing a lot of left foot stuff lately, and a lot of like the, the hi hat barking stuff that he mocked me for. And uh, <laughs> and uh, the the hi hat is very responsive. It's not like my Paiste setup. And you know that where you get this nice, full, rich sound. It's not the same, but it's still, as far as you know, what it for what it is for electric kit, it's very good, and it does the job, at least. Yeah, and it's included with the system. Yeah. Real professional hi hat stand. You can take this out to the gig after you finish practicing. Yeah. That's 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 cool. I like that about that. Cool. And I had to. I just wanted to say myself too, because like Jared and I have both been playing on this kit similar to this. I love the tom pads and the snare pads. I think it, I think yeah. they have the closest feel or the the, the best response on a tom. Yeah, that I that I can say. Well, thank you. Um, Ender Bl Ender Balik Ender Balchik. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. You says, probably are, Dave. Yeah, probably am. Uh, he says, "Awesome kit. Can you record yourself playing on this?" Of course. On the module. So and you loop just, it back type of deal. You just hit record and start yeah, playing. Yeah. Okay. The uh, click track is a little bit hot, but uh, I'll take it down, just for example purposes. But yeah, you can record this. You can also record the musical parts. Yeah. So you can everything. You can record everything um, that you do on it. But you're right. I just put it into record. I'm in the wrong place for this. Turn my click off. And record. Now, when I put it into record mode, it tells me if the next time I hit record, do I want to replace what I already did, or do I want to overdub over top of it? Oh, okay. Okay. So it's replace. Overdub, and this time I'm going to probably replace. 
track, you're gonna tell you which track I'm recording. And the quantization. Quantization is kind of a... Oh, you're gonna quantize that, Sean. <laughs> I'm gonna have to quantize that. <laughs> Maybe not these guys. All right, I'll put the quantize into... Uh, that means like to make it line up on a certain yeah. note, respective note value or, or respective part within the bar, even if it's a little bit. All right, let's just try this. I've, I've, I've uh, quantized it into triplet quarter notes, okay? And I'll play something way outside of triplet quarter notes and see what the quantization does just for <laughs> giggles, okay? Quarter notes for triplet. Quantization did. That was perfect. Where is it? It didn't even like it. It was so good that it didn't even quantize anything <laughs> for you. It couldn't. Probably couldn't. Okay, so let's just do that again, just for fun. Here we go. Stop. Record. I'm gonna put this. Maybe it didn't save. I'm gonna put this into. No, it, it saves. I'm gonna put it into 16th notes. Okay. Oh, it won't let me record over it. So let's just take a different song. There we go. Empty song. Okay, sorry guys. All right, here we go. It's gonna give me two bar count in. Okay, at the end I did something a lot more than the 16th note, so you're gonna hear that get cut off. And I just realized why it didn't play, because I had the drums turned off from before oh, okay. when I was demonstrating gotcha. the thing, okay? So here we go. Impeccable nice. timing. Yeah, so impeccable <laughs> sixteenth notes. And there you didn't do anything with funky with the quantizing. You just left it whatever. No, you added a sixteenth note. I put it at sixteenth note. Oh, okay, you did yeah. put it at sixteenth. Yeah. I thought you put it to quarter note triplets. Okay. After this lesson, I'm going to go back and listen to that quarter note triplet one because I'm really curious to see. <laughs> Actually, you know, I got to know about that. What happened? Here's what happened. <laughs> that was it. Wow. <laughs> Took out like half of your notes. Grundy says, how much are the drums you're playing? We already kind of talked about that, about yeah. 54 dollars you can say $54.99 in Canada and I think across the United States as well. Cool. Daniel J. Jones says, it must take a lot of AA batteries to run this. <laughs> <laughs> well, when the power goes out, yeah. <laughs> then it will. Um, don't listen to Daniel J. Jones's questions. Uh, how are the V drums amplified? Are they usually speaker included or do you have to buy those additionally? This one here is from nashin dot or at web dot de. Okay. I don't know how the V drums are amplified, <laughs> but uh, these can be amplified anyways. Uh, you can use headphones, you can use them through a PA system, you can use them through a personal monitoring system. We have some that attach so that you can uh, uh, listen to it in a stereo field oriented yeah. version as opposed to coming out of one. Like, if you can avoid it, kids, try not to listen to it through a, an, an instrument amplifier. If it's right there and you're hearing the kick drum and the cymbals and everything coming out of there, you, you just you feel disjointed from the drum set. So if you can try to find something that's got some kind of stereo feel so that when you hit these, they sound like they're coming from over here, and when we hit this, it sounds like it's coming over here, it's a way better experience. Cool. Mm, Their price sense. points are everywhere, I mean, from $300 to $3,000, but you know, most stores carry them. Cool. Cool. Uh, C Lock says, Sean, what kind of amp do you, do you recommend using with an e-kit? Sorry, I just, we just asked, answered that one. I'll move on. Uh, Steve A says, how do Yamaha... How do Yamaha feel about mixing Zildjian Gen 16 cymbals with their electronic kits? <laughs> you're going to find out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you guys don't know, stick around if you're watching this live in two hours. We're about to find out. We're doing a Gen 16 demo. <laughs> okay. Actually, it's in one hour. So. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Steve A, how do you feel? Oh, just answer that one. I feel good about it. You feel good about it. Andre, uh, sorry, Andrew Speed says, hey guys, does the electronic bass drum pad have the same response as an acoustic bass drum? Thanks for the great lesson. Uh, no, but it, it's better than what a real kick drum's gonna do. I mean, yeah. it, because it's small and doesn't have a lot of <clears throat> place, because uh, there's something about hitting a kick drum and feeling the resonance coming off of it and the sound coming off it. And the beat are just digging into the head if that's what you want, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. now, and you don't ever want to do that with an electric kit. Just so like pound it. And well, we design them for pretty serious punishment. We know what people are doing to these things. Yeah. <laughs> you know you're using wooden beaters now. <laughs> I would suggest that you play around with your beater, um, how hard your beater is when you're playing. That also goes for a fella who's been having trouble with getting evicted from the neighbors. Um, sometimes that can really, really drastically change how these feel. 
Yeah. Um, some companies are really squishy and soft. Some we like to make them a little tighter because a lot of our drummers, like the Carter Beaufort fans of the world, like to do some really quick stuff with their yeah. feet. And, that. Excellent. Okay. Awesome. Well, that we is one more. One more. Okay. One more. Okay. And then we'll leave it at that. Will the thrill? And this is a, a good question. I have an old DTX version 2.0 module. Mm. It says, can it be updated with the new voice samples? I'm sorry, no. Mm. Uh, the DTX version two. Uh, that's like a, a, that's quite old. I'm afraid. No, I didn't have any way of putting any MIDI information into it at all. Cool. Awesome. Great module, though. Yeah. Cool. Okay. That's it. Well. Yeah. Uh, to close us out, Sean has agreed to do an extended drum solo. So for the next 20 minutes... <laughs> Quantized at quarter note triplets. <laughs> for the no. next 20 minutes, did you say? <laughs> Why well. do you do that to these Sean, people? Sean, thanks so much Thank for you. coming out, man. Yeah, yeah it's good. Pleasure. Yeah, um, give, I always say give a virtual round of applause for Mr. Sean Brown. Uh, it's been awesome. Come thanks. out and give us a demonstration of this. Thanks. Uh, I forget your name again. But, uh, Whatever, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we appreci appreciate all you guys. And please, if you are watching this live, stick around till the next thing we have coming up with Larnell Lewis. If you are watching this in the archives later or on YouTube, you need to find the video with Larnell Lewis in it because that's what we're going to next. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys all again very soon.